Happy you could come along. We are joined as always by Greg Engert, beer director for the neighborhood restaurant group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes Rustico, two locations, Alexandria and Ballston. Uh, also, why don't we throw in, uh, since uh, we're in Alexandria, uh, Columbia Firehouse in Old Town. Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you too. What is on tap this week? So this is one of those uh, very exciting uh, beer of the weeks because something that you know I've been hoping would happen and been told was going to happen for a long time never did, and then from out of nowhere, it did happen. So Sounds this like is some old high school girlfriends. Uh, right, Sorry. I know it's Sorry. like you just never ne thought, never right? Mind. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Deschutes Brewing has finally come to DC, uh, and actually on uh, Tuesday uh, coming up, which is the 18th of November, we'll be doing the official launch for them uh, right here at Church Key, um, but. We've been big fans of Deschutes for some time. They've been nice enough to send us some kegs here and there for events over the last five years that we've been open. Uh, but the thing with Deschutes is as big as they are, they just, they're very, they make amazing beer. They have no trouble selling it in the West and Midwest. So never really knew when it was gonna happen uh, out here. And I have to give credit where it's, where it's due. Um, Gary Fish, who's the founder of, of Deschutes and uh, actually a fan of Church Key, which is pretty cool. Um, he's, uh, become friends with Jose Andres, who we know from uh, all of his great restaurants locally, Zaytinia, OML, and on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, I think they met at like uh, one of the food and wine fests in like Aspen or something, and hatched a plan to brew a Deschutes beer for uh, Deschutes Jose Andres collaboration beer. And so I think that's kind of what nudged it further to DC because they, they brewed it. It's called Zarabanda, it's an awesome spice saison. Uh, we can get it. It's available in D.C. and in Virginia. We're not talking about it today, but I think once they said, well, we got to get that beer to market, let's send some other stuff. And so that's why uh, we finally got the Deschutes beer. And um, uh, growing up in Seattle and being a craft beer fan on the West Coast, you know Deschutes, but a lot of people uh, may not have heard of it. Or if they have, it's just kind of like they hear about it when they travel to the West right. Coast. So they really cherish getting that Mirror Pond Pale Ale, which is like, you know, they're the standard bearer for pale ales in the Pacific Northwest, or Black Butte Porter, which is their classic porter. Um, and then, of course, over time, they created some of the first cult beers, like the Abyss, which is their uh, Barrel Asian Imperial Stout, things like that. So today, we have um, Black Butte 26, which is for the 26th birthday of Deschutes. They started in 1988. Um, and it's a, a riff on Black Butte, their classic porter. It's an imperial version of that. 50% of it uh, is, or thereabouts, 50% of it um, has been aged for six months in bourbon barrels. But the <laughs> I base the label. Yeah, you <laughs> know, like, the word yes. bourbon. And, uh, oh. and uh, it's also been brewed with um, some cocoa nibs to increase the mm -hmm. chocolate effect. Um, but but uh, it's also been brewed with some cranberries and pomegranate molasses, um, which is going to dry it out a little bit, give it a little bit of a fruit character, compel that fruit character. Uh, as well, and also I should mention, pomegranate molasses have nothing to do with molasses. It's just concentrated pomegranate juice, and it's delicious. So uh, it's, it's an amazing beer. It's almost 11% alcohol. Celebrates a brewery that opened in 1988, one of the biggest and still best uh, in the country. And last, they first brewed this beer as an anniversary beer in, um, I guess it would have been 2008, for their 20th anniversary, and loved it so much that every anniversary, hence, they've uh, they brewed it again. So. Well, I like the yeah. sort of, you know, our culture, for whatever reason, is just obsessed with anniversaries that are on the it's O weird. or the 5, right? I mean, what's the difference between 24th and 26th compared to 25th? Uh, nothing. nothing. Next to nothing. So the year. Keep making so them. that's cool. Yeah, keep so making them. And uh, so this is the seventh iteration of that. Mm. It's nice. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. that you little get a little bit of the fruit, fruit in the tart. Finish. Yeah, yeah. But it's not up front. And it's also not like soured or funky. And no, and the bourbon is, you know, if you're sque squeamish about bourbon aged beers for whatever reason, uh, it's your choice. Um, this is not overpowering whatsoever, the bourbon. Absolutely too, not. Yeah. And also, again, though, you know, bourbon barrel aged beers are not supposed to taste, of course, like bourbon, because we have bourbon for that. It's supposed to taste, it's an ingredient, just the way the pomegranate juice is or the cocoa nibs. Uh, or the malt or the hop, so it's just a little bit there. It's nice. It tastes like a German candy bar with fruit in it, and that's I say that as a compliment, you know. <laughs> I mean, like, really, like, like German, like a, a dense German cake with yeah. like raspberry yeah. um, frosting mm. or something, or oh, yeah. raspberry interior. That'll have some fans. 
Yeah. Uh, what, what's the uh, potency on that baby? I think it's 10.8%, okay. is that correct? Maybe. Um, yep, 10.8%. It's pretty, uh, pretty tasty <laughs> stuff, for sure. Well done for the anniversary. What would you pair this with? I mean, we just talked about dessert. Uh, although I think that, you know, the flavor, it's its funny. The, the more something tastes like a dessert, the less it goes with that specific dessert. I think. Yeah. It just like cancels I mean, it's it overkill, out. overkill, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do it there. Um, but obviously it'd be great uh, with desserts again. I mean, I, you, I can see doing this with like just straight up cheesecake because you got chocolate and raspberry coming at you just from the beer. So you could do it with dessert. I think that's pretty obvious or on its own to finish. But I'm, what I'm intrigued about is, you know, we always talk about, um, you know, grilled meat and roasty beers because that roast character really does go with the grilling of the meat. I make sure you do the same thing with the malt or grain, the same thing you're doing to the meat. But a lot of times what it's missing is that kind of wine-like note, you know, because I love wine with, with grilled meats because you get that, that fruit note that really kind of draws out the juicy interior. This to me has both. I mean, it's not fruity in the nose, but that nice bit of like fruit-driven tartness in the finish, I think would just kill with like prime rib, mm -hmm. ribeyes or something like roasted duck. Um, but also anything that's thick, I was thinking like blue cheese burgers would be um, fantastic with this. With a nice um, char on it. Well, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like blackened yeah, or yeah. even, you know, um, blackened seafoods, uh, always good. You can do it with, um, foie. I mean, anything thick and rich is gonna be great, but in a different way now. It's not, because the beer is both creamy and rich and like tart and uplifting at the same time. It's really remarkable. Welcome to Shoots. I think they're going to do quite well here. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone always, please do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.